Hello class, we're going to make some changes to our ball bounce program so that we can add some parameters that could be changed as the ball is moving. We're going to add some slider components so that we can change the X speed, the Y speed, and the ball's diameter. And we're going to add some radio buttons so we can change the color of the ball as it moves. So if I move the slider, I can increase the X change. I can increase the Y change or I can decrease it. So now it's not changing much in the X direction, but a lot in the Y direction. If I slow it down, it changes in both directions. If I drag the slider this way, I get a bigger sized bouncing ball or a really small bouncing ball. And then I can change my color as it moves. Okay, so let's look at the changes that were made. All the changes for this program were done in the main frame class for the components and then we just had to make a few changes in the drawing area class afterwards to take into account those variables that we're now letting change. So let's look at the main frame first. If I look at the design tab of the main frame there was nothing really in the design tab originally other than this drawing area panel. What I had to do was I added a new panel. So this is now called J panel 1. It's been added to the main frame frame. The way I did that was I went up here, I grabbed the panel and I dragged it and I dropped it onto this frame. I'm not going to let go because I don't want to create another one. And then I stretched it out. So this is the new panel that was created and I just dragged it out to resize it so it can have all the components. Then I grabbed three sliders and I dragged them on. So I've got three sliders here. I've got J slider 1, J slider 2, which is the Y speed, the Y change slider, and J slider 3, which is the diameter slider. Then I added three of these radio buttons. So I just dragged them on, and I've got J radio button 1, 2, and 3. And then I put on some labels just, to, just so I could put what those sliders do. So I've got a label for X speed, for Y speed, and for diameter. And I don't program them. I just They just say what, what's there. Once I've added those, I had to add actions to the sliders and the radio buttons. So for each slider, I right-clicked on it, and I went to, actually, to start with, I changed the properties. So the maximum value is the biggest value that that slider will have, and then value is the value that it will start with when the program runs. So initially this was 100 and this was 50. I set them to 30 and 15, but you can play around with those as you like. So I did that for each of the three sliders. For the particular for the diameter slider, I set my maximum width to 100 pixels and my starting value to 20, which is like what it is in our original program. Then what I did was I right clicked on the uh, slider, I went to events, and I chose mouse, and mouse, whoops, mouse. I chose mouse released because I want the value of the slider to change when I let go of the mouse, because that's, I'm letting go of the mouse on the value of the slider that I want. When I do that, It'll open up in my drawing area, sorry, in my mainframe. In the code for my mainframe, it'll create a method listener, an action listener, for the slider. And what I'll do is for each slider, I'll, I'll grab the value and I will send that value back to my drawing area class, to the variable in there. So here I said drawing area x change. X changes the value in the drawing area class that says how the X value moves. I'll say the X change value is equal to the J slider 1 dot get value. And then I do the same for the drawing area J slider 2. That should be J slider 2. And then I've got another one for J slider 3 for the for the for the diameter. Then let's just look back at the design again. Then for the 
radio buttons, I right click on it and I do an event action and I just say action performed and that will open up a that will create an action performed listener in the main frame in the mainframe class for each of the radio buttons. So if I look at my source code for that, here's my J radio button one action. Now the way radio buttons work is that when you I play it for a second. If I click on one of them, it turns the other ones off. So only one radio button can be selected at a time. And selecting one radio button turns the other ones in the group off. This is what's called an exclusive behavior, meaning that there's exclusively one button that can be chosen at a time. You cannot have more than one radio button chosen at a time if you're programming it as to conventional user interface guidelines. Okay, so back to the mainframe class and the coding. Here's the red button. So if I click the red button, I set the set selected um, property for the radio button one to true, and that makes the dot appear beside the red button, and I set the other two to false. And then I set my color my current color variable that's in the drawing class i will show you that in a minute to the red value to color red similarly for button 2 which is green I say I turn off the red and the and the uh, the red and the blue buttons and I turn on the green button and then for the blue button which is J button 3 J radio button 3 I turn off red and green and I turn on blue and I set the color to blue. That's all I have to do as far as programming goes for the components, but then in the drawing area I have to make some changes. We have to make some changes to our global variables. Namely, I created a variable called ball diameter that is going to start off as a 20 pixel width. I have to make it, I have to change them to say public static for these ones because we are communicating between the mainframe class and the drawing area now so that we can get the values from those components into the drawing area. So they have to be set as public static. And these are what are called object oriented programming concepts, which we'll discuss further in grade 12. But right now you just have to make those changes. And then I created a new variable, a new color type variable called current color, which will be the color of the ball. And again, it's public static because we have to get the value we have to be able to set this value from the mainframe components, the, the, uh, the radio button components. Then down in the paint component method, I changed my set color to command to instead of just saying color.red, I say cur color, so it'll dynamically change the color based on what radio button's pressed. And then the width and height of the ball will now be this ball diameter variable. Those are the only changes you have to make in the paint component in the drawing area. And we've made the changes in the radio in the mainframe class to handle the radio buttons and the sliders. So now when I click play, I can change my color. I can change my diameters and then I can change my X and Y speeds. So if I set my X speed to zero, it doesn't move left to right. If I set my Y speed to zero, it doesn't move up and down. And then if I change this to something else, I can vary the angle that the ball is bouncing around. Okay, so I hope you'll give that a try and have some fun. Thanks very much.